Hi everyone, this is Jeff Tremblay, lead sound designer and lead audio tech on Dead Space Remake. Today, we will be showing some of the technical improvements we have made for the remake. Later in this video, we will have Mike Dominiak, technical sound designer, and Diego Merayo, senior audio programmer, showing you in-game example, comparing between DS1 and the remake, as well as going over the technical implementation behind the scene. But before going to the details, I would take a bit of time to go over some of the basic audio concepts we will be referring in this video. The occlusion is when a sound is behind a wall, a door or a large object that completely blocks the direct and reflected indirect signals. In this example, the sound cannot reach the listener, so we say that the sound is completely occluded or blocked. In dead space, most walls are thick metal, so if the sounds are outside the room and the door is closed, so any exterior sounds would be silence. In other cases, we will have glass windows on which we can tell the system to let through a little bit of the sound. So the result would be a muffled, filtered, direct signal and a muffled, indirect, diffuse signal. For the obstruction, the difference is that some of the signal could potentially reach the listener. In this example, the sound is behind an object or wall, but some indirect signal could reach the listener by bending around the corners of the object or by being reflected on the walls. The result will be a muffled direct signal and clear unfiltered indirect signal. The portals. We refer to portals as volumes we place on doors or placed at specific locations in the levels. And at runtime, the occlusion node made by Diego select the most logical portal to play the sound from. Along with sending the corrected position, it also sends the correct path distance for the sound to reach the listener. The result is a more accurate sound positioning and distance attenuation and filtering. Alright, let's now listen to how these concepts applies in the context of the game. Let's start with reminding ourselves what the original Dead Space sounded like. Looking at the headbanger corridor, you can hear as soon as the door opens, the sound is coming from the right side of the screen. The sound should realistically be traveling down the corridor to Isaac, but standing here, you can actually hear the sound coming through the wall. As we come around the corner, you will notice minimal audible changes to the sound position and obstruction. In the remake, there will be much more noticeable mix changes when standing here and the sound is not obstructed, to when I move around the corner and the sound is actually blocked. Now, let's take a look at our in-progress remake. You can hear the sound is now coming from the left, at the end of the corridor. The orange boxes you are seeing are portals we placed in the level and the lines between them are the path the sound is traveling to get to Isaac. We lock the sound to a third of the portal from the direction it is coming from to keep the correct directionality. We also use this same system for sound passing through to an attached room. As the door closes, we start applying mix changes to the sound. When the door is fully closed, we move the sound source to the window and apply even heavier mix changes. Blazing sun. 
Since this room has no window, we are cutting the sound completely as the door closes. We have the ability to choose what sounds are let through the doors, so not every sound will be called if we do not want them to be. The system also works vertically. The way the system works is by creating a map of the areas that are reachable by the player considering the surrounding openings like doors and windows. Then, when a new sound starts playing, we can check in the map we have previously generated if the sound is audible and what is the shortest path to Isaac. We update this map at regular intervals but much less often than the sounds themselves, because it's expensive and its data does not change very often. But having this information allows us to calculate a more physically accurate position of the sound very quickly. Your VO designer on Dead Space. In the original Dead Space, Isaac's breathing and heartbeat was such an integral part of the player's connection with Isaac in building immersion and emphasizing the horror experience. Breathing is a huge part of Dead Space, and horror films in general, that enhance the feeling of being alone and vulnerable. For Dead Space, we're looking back at the core functionality of the original, and not only bringing that experience forward, but we're finding ways we can improve it to a level that exceeds expectations in today's generation of games. In the original Dead Space, you would hear Isaac's breathing change and heartbeat ramp up over time when sprinting, when low on health, low on oxygen, during combat, and spike for jump scares or scripted events. All of that will be there. A couple of improvements, for example. In the original, when Isaac was sprinting or injured, you would hear additional grunts to emphasize his level of exertion play simultaneously over top of the bass breathing rate. Exertions, such as melee and stomp, also played over top of the breathing rather than interrupt it. If you listened carefully, you were hearing two voices at the same time. The exerted breaths didn't interject the bass breathing. For Dead Space, we're building a system that supports transitioning respiratory rates through fatigued and low health states seamlessly. As another example in the original, when Isaac was gasping for air while running out of oxygen, exiting the vacuum of space or using an oxygen refill would instantaneously and unnaturally revert Isaac back to a calm breathing state, as if nothing had happened. Exiting vacuum. For Dead Space, you can expect to hear Isaac catch his breath as he recovers from a lack of oxygen. Let's have a listen to this prototyped in-game with some placeholder content. And as Isaac catches his breath, you hear it transition back smoothly into the bass breathing cycle. For Dead Space, we're building what is called the Alive System. It encompasses all components of Isaac's breathing and heart rate, vocal exertions, and dialogue influenced by a variety of driving gameplay features. The limbic system is the part of the brain that controls behavioral and emotional responses such as anxiety and fear. When you watch a horror movie or play a scary game, the limbic system can trigger a release of adrenaline into the body, causing a physical response such as increased heart rate. In our game, adrenaline is derived from various values driven by external factors that have a direct influence on Isaac's heart rate BPM. External factors that act as adrenaline are the combat difficulty value, 
scripted events and jump scares, Isaac's fatigue level, Isaac's oxygen level, and Isaac's health. We want Isaac to reflect how anyone would physically react in the scenario he's placed in, and vice versa, use that to influence the player to feel the same response. For Isaac's scripted dialogue lines, where the player maintains full control of Isaac, we will have three variations of each line to pick from based on his current state. A normal version, a fatigued version, and an injured version. Let's have a listen to how Isaac's fatigue level or being in a low health state can impact Isaac's scripted dialogue in-game. Nicole? It's me. Nicole? It's me. Nicole! It's me! Making up Isaac's vitals are his heart rate, respiratory rate, oxygen level, and health. As Isaac is 43 years old, I studied average heart and respiratory rates for his age group at different levels of fitness to land on Isaac's base heart rate of 70 BPM to build up from. As heart rate increases, his respiratory rate increases as well. I broke down the respiratory rates into seven breathing cycles mapped out across seven correlating heart rate BPM zones. Each cycle also has fatigued and injured modifiers. All right, let's have a listen to how Isaac's breathing is behaving in game. One thing to note, the breathing and exertion samples that you'll be hearing in game are not gunner right. These are placeholder samples that we recorded for testing all of this functionality out in game as we were building it. And here on screen is our Alive monitor. This is some debug information that we've put together to see Isaac's current breathing cycle, his heart rate, what his breathing state is, if he's inhaling or exhaling, what his fatigue level is, his oxygen level, his health, and the current combat intensity. And if we have Isaac sprint here, uh, over time you'll start to see his fatigue level increase. And when Isaac's fatigue level gets past a certain threshold, you'll start to hear fatigued breaths, exerted breaths, start to mix in with his regular bass breathing rate. And when Isaac stops sprinting, you'll see his uh, fatigue level start to go down, his heart rate will come down, and his respiratory rate will slow down as well. Here we have Isaac in a very low health state, he's injured. And when he moves around in this state, we start to introduce uh, little winces of pain mixed into his breathing cycle. <sighs> And what's really great about the way we've built this system is that Isaac can be in both an injured state and fatigued state at the same time. So hearing those injured winces, those fatigued breaths mixed in with his regular breathing actually sounds quite natural. And wrapping up the Alive system, we have Exertions. These are single one-off exertion events that interrupt or interject between base breathing loops. For example, melee, stomp, hit reactions, and death. Exertions, for the most part, will end in exhales and restart the breathing loop back up on an inhale. However, the breathing system will have the flexibility to have the option to start the breathing loop back up on an exhale. Hello, I'm Michael Dominic, the technical audio artist on Dead Space. 
I will be showing you the in progress plasma cutter and pulse rifle today. Let's get started with the plasma cutter and have a listen to what we are remaking. Now let's have a listen to where we are at with our updated version. When we are designing a weapon, we approach them in many different layers. All of the red and blue boxes outlined in this picture represent another layer that is being played on each shot of the weapon. Now let's take a listen to some of these layers one at a time so we can really hear each element that's being played. That's all we have for the plasma cutter today, but let's take a sneak peek at comparing the original pulse rifle with our in-progress version.